Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we are taking another look at a deck which could be fun to play when Burning Shadows is out and the rotation has happened. In the past couple of days, we've looked at Turtonator, we've looked at Tapu Koko. Today, it's time to go a little more rogue, a little bit more outside of the box. We are looking at Beware, and I am a huge Beware fan. He is my editing buddy. I've wanted to make a deck with him ever since he came out in Sun and Moon. The Sun and Moon one wasn't particularly good enough. The GX wasn't particularly good enough. The Guardians Rising one wasn't particularly good enough. But I am hoping that Burning Shadows is going to buck that trend. Now, once again, we got a Stage 1 Beware, and even he's a Stage 1 Pokemon. The key here is you can attack for just a double colorless energy. Now, you could even, if you want to get a fast start, you could even use Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag for a Wally, to evolve your stuff into a Beware, attach a double colorless, and get going on the very first turn of the game. Well, your first turn going second, your second turn going first. Remember, on the very first turn of the game, nobody's allowed to actually attack. Of course, you do then not grab a Bridget and grab all your stuffles out, so this could be a bit slow in terms of getting you ready for future turns. Now, the main attack we're looking at here for a double colorless energy mix-up. Flip a coin if heads discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Sounds like fun, but you've only got a 50-50 chance of actually hitting a heads. That's where you bring in the Victini from Guardians Rising. He allows you to reflip only once, you just cannot stack. And you reflip if you don't get what you want. So if you flip a Tails, you can use Victini. You reflip, gives you then a 75% chance of hitting that head, getting rid of the top three cards of your opponent's deck. And this really is what the deck revolves around. Now, as with all of these, it's not just trying to deck your opponent out. Hopefully you do deck your opponent out. If they cannot draw a card to begin their turn, they lose the game. But the key here is that you stop your opponent doing anything. So you might not deck them out, you might take prizes. But the key is either you stop them having any cards to draw at the beginning of their turn and hence they lose the game, or you just get rid of all their good stuff so they can't do anything. You discard all of their Pokemon, all of their double colorless, etc. If you're playing against something like Persimian and you get rid of all their double colorless energy and their special charge, that's it. They can't attack, you're going to win the game. Yay! Now, we'll get on to more milling in a second. Milling is what we refer to when we try and discard our opponent's deck to win the game. But there is a another attack on Beware here, Tantrum. 120 damage. This Pokemon is now confused. So you can just sit there hitting for 120 damage per turn. And you don't need to worry about confusion too much. You can always just play something like Chaos Tower. Certainly against something like Persimian or Garbodor, you can be getting one hit KO after one hit KO. What's the problem here? You need a double colorless energy, and although you can play special charge to get them back, and as a side note, you can play energy lotto to try and search them out, because you need the double colorless here to get going with Beware, so energy lotto is a good shout to get it out. But even after you've got the double colorless... You still need a basic energy as well. Maybe you play Max Elixir onto a Stuffle, but it's just a little bit awkward. 120 for free. It just takes too long to get the energy on. And when you're against something like a Garbodor or a Persimian that is hitting for a single energy, you are going to be outsped. But that's okay. Because this attack really comes in when your opponent has got nothing to do. Until then, you just mill. And the idea here is to be milling free cards with Beware every turn. We've got a couple of cards to help us out. We've got Team Rocket's Handiwork. It's a supporter card. Flip two coins for each head to discard two cards from the top of your opponent's deck. So in theory here, you should hit one out of two on average and discard two cards off the top of their deck. Of course, both Beware and Team Rockets are flippy cards. So if you flip a lot of tails, you are going to have a very bad day. 
Now, because we're speaking post-rotation here, one of the big downsides is that Versus Seeker has rotated, or will have rotated. So that means you can't just use Versus Seeker to reuse this, and although this is not something I'm going to be recommending in every one of my decks, I think Puzzle of Time here is great. I don't think in every deck you can just take out four Versus Seeker and chuck in four Puzzle of Time. I think that's lazy and wrong and bad, but... I think in this deck it works, because you need to be using Team Rocket's handiwork, because you need to be getting your double colourless energy back, etc. I think it is absolutely imperative that you play Puzzle of Time here to try and reuse it. Now we do have one other option here for discarding cards, and it is Charizard GX. And I know it's a GX Pokemon that gives up two prizes. One of the things with Beware is that the idea is to try and make your opponent KO 6 Beware, so it's a long route for them to get all of those KOs anyway, and you're just discarding cards the whole time. And then at some point they run out of resources and they're unable to KO all of your beware and then you're rolling. Charizard gives up two prizes. That's a bad thing. Charizard is a slow stage two. That's a bad thing. Charizard is a fire and a double colorless, making him kind of slow. That's a bad thing. But it's worth it. Because his GX attack allows you to discard the top ten cards from your opponent's deck. That, ladies and gentlemen, is like two beware attacks and a double heads on Team Rocket's handiwork. It's worth it. And the ideal here is that you play mostly double colours, but you play a few fire energy. And one turn when your opponent doesn't KO beware, you just get a fire energy on Charmander. Now your options here are either playing one Charmander, one Charmeleon, one Charizard, and just evolving up slowly... Do not ever evolve until you're about to use a GX attack, otherwise your opponent will get an easy two prizes. Or you play one Charmander, one Rare Candy, one Charizard, and try and go for it that way. Either way, a really important card here is going to be Pokedex. Or Rotom Dex, I suppose, as it actually is. Because it allows you to just refresh your prize cards from your deck. So on your first search through of a Bridget or an Ultra Ball, you look to see if you've got all three Charizard parts in your deck. If you find out they're actually in your prizes, you play a Rotom Dex, and hopefully then they get not in your deck. Sounds like fun, and of course with Puzzle of Time, you can always reuse Rotom decks if you have to, so you only need one or two of these at the absolute most. And this really is the deck. You discard three cards a turn with Beware, hopefully, throw in a few from Team Rocket's handiwork, hopefully, and then discard ten cards from your opponent's deck using Charizard, and in theory... You're either going to win the game because you just get rid of all of your opponent's cards, or potentially you don't even need to get rid of all of their cards. You just discard enough cards that your opponent can't set up, and then you just sit there hitting 120, taking cheeky prizes with Beware. You can always go back to milling if you have to, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win with Beware. It's a combination of Beware, Team Rocket's Handiwork, and Charizard GX until your opponent either has no cards or doesn't have enough good cards to set up and execute their primary strategy. So what are the problems with this Beware deck? Well, there are a few. First of all, we have got an issue with the weakness. The fighting weakness here is bad. It will be very easily KO'd by Persimian. Anybody can tech Marshadow into their deck. Remember, Marshadow can copy the attacks of any basic Pokemon in your discard pile. So you've got a good fighting attacker in every single matchup. Little bit upsetting. Of course, if you put a choice band on Beware, you can actually get a one-hit KO on a Marshadow because you'll be hitting 150. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is not an attacking deck. The free energy attack means you're going to be too slow primarily. You really do want to focus on milling here, although it is an option if you've got to get rid of a Marshadow. One of the other options here is just any Pokemon that can get easy KOs is going to be an issue. So something like Garbodor, as soon as you've played six items, Garbodor can just KO you every time. Or Garbodor could even use its second attack here and try and get rid of your energy with Acid Spray. Or anybody can get rid of your energy with something like a Drampa or an Enhanced Hammer. So if you're too reliant on Double Colorless, and this is where the Fire Energy comes in, then you can be punished for that. 
Then, of course, you've got Gardevoir, who can just get a bunch of energy on. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't take much energy at all. In fact, it, it, it takes two energy on Gardevoir if you've got two, four in total. If you've got three energy on, Gardevoir needs one energy to KO with infinite force. Not only that, but Gardevoir's got Twilight GX. So as much as your Charizard's going to discard 10 cards, their Gardevoir is going to recover 10 cards. As a strategy, Beware is great. They've got multiple options to get rid of cards here. The problem is, if your opponent sets up a decent attacker, Beware is not a tanky Pokemon. Now, you can always use Bodybuilding Dumbbells to give them an extra 60 HP here. That would be an option. But there's so many decks like Persimian, like Gardevoir, like Speed Darkrai, like Garbodor, who are going to be able to set up a one-hit KO before too long, and then just KO every Beware in turn. So it really comes down to how fast you are in the early game, and this is why I suggested Wally earlier, although you'd need to get the double colorless and you'd need to get the Victini on turn one as well as the Stuffle for the Wally, which is a lot to ask for. But if you can discard enough cards in the early game, your opponent's not going to be able to set up that attacker. I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think Beware is going to be a powerhouse deck after rotation. It's certainly a deck I'm going to be playing on my stream, twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. Make sure you go and follow that if you haven't already. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a deck I personally will be playing around with. But here's the deal. It's got a lot of problems. It really comes down in a lot of matchups to what you discard at the beginning of the game. You hit enough good cards, you win, you don't, you lose. It really can be as simple as that. But a load of you have been asking for some more unusual decks, some rogue decks to be trying after rotation. And I think Beware could be an awful lot of fun. But if you disagree, that's what the comment section is there for. Go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy and Twitch like like I said, at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, play me on stream, etc., make sure you go and check out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.